Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology Crack. Uh, this tutorial is going to help us work through the female sexual reproduction system. Uh, we'll look and start with external anatomy and then we'll move our way inside to see some of the key structures internally. Now, we're going to start with external anatomy. We'll start with this little round fat pouch. This is going to cover the pubic symphysis. Remember from AMP1, we have this fibrocartilaginous pad that connects our two pubic bones. So again, the upper vaginal fat pouch is going to be called the mons pubis. We're going to have now uh, structures for again external genitalia that form and make up the vulva we're gonna start with our labias we have two labias labia major majora we have a labia minor or minora we're also gonna have a portion of the clitoris now all our models that we have in lab are a little deceiving because it shows the clitoris as um, this small little boomerang like structure and it gives the false impression that it is only a centimeter or two long while the part that you see that protrudes through the clitoral hood is relatively small we're only seeing a small portion of the actual clitoris the clitoris extends down on um, both sides of the vaginal canal and it can extend all the way down here in a forked fashion uh, when it's going to also incorporate our periurethral uh, glands or our skeins glands so Again, the model is a little deceiving for the true size of the clitoris. It does extend past the vaginal. The forks of this will extend down and past the vaginal canal. So we have our clitoris. For more external anatomy, we have our uh, external urethral orifice. So this is going to be the opening to the urethra that leads to the bladder. So we covered this in urinary. We have our external vaginal orifice or vaginal orifice. This is going to be the opening to the vaginal canal. Again, on most females, we're going to have a thin membrane that covers this orifice. It is called the hymen. Uh, functions unknown. We really don't know what it serves, what function it serves. As you look into the vaginal canal, you see all these rugae. So all these little bumps and grooves this is going to help increase surface area uh, when a baby will be pushed through this canal to allow it to expand so the canal doesn't share and tear. The next thing we're going to look at is going to be the deep most portion of this vaginal canal. We see that there's another uh, organ that is protruding and pushing into the vaginal canal. This is the uterus. We're going to look at the uterus in two different ways. Uh, one, histologically. So we have another tutorial that goes through the histology of the layers of the uterus. We're going to identify these layers, but not differentiate them histologically. This is just a macro view of our three different layers. But we're going to pay attention to this portion. Remember, the uterus is the size of a small pear. The portion that pushes through into the vaginal canal is called the cervix. Because it pushes through, it forms these anterior and posterior horns. They are called the anterior fornix and the posterior fornix. We have two openings to the inside of the anterior of the uterus. It is called the external cervical os and the internal cervical os. Again, this is where sperm will travel into the vaginal canal through these two openings to get into the fallopian tube. Now for the uterus, we have the top portion is called the fundus. Our three basic layers, the innermost layer is called the endometrium. This is the layer that's going to engorge with blood uh, and really swell and, and multiply in size during your 28 day uterine cycle as we prepare for the implantation or, or not implanting a, a fertilized egg. Okay. And again, if that egg doesn't fertilize, it's this layer, this endometrial layer that will sloth off. The largest layer here is our myometrium. So this is going to be smooth muscle. The reason why it's the biggest layer is it's going to contribute to those smooth muscle contractions to help push that baby out. And again, if you think back to endocrine system, we see that the hormone that's going to help uh, make these contractions is going to be oxytocin. The outermost layer is our parametrium. Okay, so this is going to be a relatively thin, smaller layer compared to our myometrium and our endometrium. Now we're going to turn this model upward a little bit so that we can kind of see more interior and look at some ligaments and structures. So now remember there are some ligaments that hold the ovaries in place so that we're able to uh, prevent the fallopian tubes and the ovaries and the fimbriae to kind of bounce down on the uterus every time you run, jump, and move. So we have a broad ligament, and it's really hard to see in this model, but the broad ligament kind of extends from the fallopian tubes. It is pretty broad and wide, hence broad ligament, and it'll extend down the length 
of the uterus and kind of support our uh, macro structures. We have another ligament right here. It connects to the ovary, uh, connects the ovary to the actual uterus. It is called the ovarian ligament. We have another ligament here. This is called our round ligament. Now this tube that you see that connects off the uterus and kind of connects to these feather-like, finger-like projections is called your uterine tube or your fallopian tube. The feather or finger-like projections you see are the fimbriae. Now these are not attached to the ovary. So here's our ovary under here. They're kind of disconnected. And when ovulation is sparked, these guys really come to life and start sweeping and pulling and grabbing uh, for that egg. They'll sweep the egg into the fallopian tubes, at which point right here in the middle is that magic point where that egg will be fertilized or not fertilized okay so this is pretty much our female anatomy uh, I hope it helps you good luck studying